So tell, tell us about the oak gall, <laughs> George. What, what is an oak gall? So an oak gall, it also is known as the oak apple. It has, it's actually just like picking apples, you know, when you just twist them off. <laughs> Quite often, sort of late June, July, we'll always see these sometimes greeny red, um, what will look like crab apples um, on oak trees. And uh, what they actually are is, um, I guess, the, the housing for a type of wasp, is it? I think, yeah, it's a parasitic, parasitic wood wasp or something like that. Yeah, so essentially they lay their eggs on the tree and the tree creates a protective coating, casing um, for the wasp to develop. Um, and then once it's mature enough, it works its way out of the, the oak apple and flies away. The, we just found a big tree full of oak galls. This would be a great time to explore their ink making possibilities. And my friend happens to work in an archive that has a lot of medieval manuscripts, so we're going to go and see her later today. Since we've got a, an actual medievalist shadowing us for work experience this week. I'm Claire. Uh, I'm from Canada. I'm from Newfoundland, and I'm doing a work experience with the foragers here. I study history. So what we're going to do today is really interesting because we're going to be studying uh, how they made ink in the Middle Ages. It's going to be really interesting to see how the uh, how they made the the ink and how they wrote and manuscripts and why you know why I can still read it and use it as primary sources in my essays today. Catch one of them So the process is quite simple. You take one of these oak galls, crush it up, infuse it in water. So. Right. So what we're doing is we're crushing up oak galls. So as you can see, this has been a house for a little parasite grub to grow. Into the into slurry the... of ground up galls. Yeah, right? so they've been in, they need to be infusing in there for what, 24 hours? 24 hours, yeah. The recipe from the 1770s said that you have to do it with a pint of rainwater, but I used tap water. I bet this. Oh! <laughs> That was one of those noises. That's another noise to be sampled for a techno track, I think. <laughs> We've used a coffee filter to strain out the bits of gall. It's all right, I don't mind it all dribbling down my hands. I've heard that before. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's leave that to settle through for a second. Oh, yeah. The way it's running down the outside. Yeah. So, wait, the moment that they, they realised that this worked, is that... Did he like think I might try and eat this and he accidentally, or she, used a rusty spoon and it went black? <laughs> well, okay, let's, let's think right. about how someone actually worked this out. You add some green vitriol to it and the modern name for green vitriol is iron sulfate. We've actually bought that from a garden center. Oh, here it is. Home base's finest, sulfate of iron. Use it now for soil conditioning apparently. Slowly add it in, there you go. Stir. And look at that. It's already turned amazingly black. That'll probably do. Feels a bit foamy. Okay. Oh no, it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> Magic wand. Cool. So there it is, iron gall ink ready to make our own trading charter.